Hello and welcome to Energy Express from WVU Extension Service and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. I'm your host, Zach Harold. I'm here in front of the state capitol in Charleston because it's West Virginia Day. On June 20th, 1863, West Virginia became the 35th state in the United States of America. To celebrate, we got experts from around WVU Extension to tell us about all those kinds of things that make this place we call home so special. Let's check it out. Hello, my name is Lewis Honecker and I'm a WVU Extension Agent for 4-H Youth Development. I'm here in Wheeling, West Virginia on this very special day. You do know why today is special, right? It's June 20th. That means it's West Virginia Day. West Virginia Day is the day we celebrate as West Virginia's birthday. On June 20th, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed that West Virginia would become the 35th state of the Union. The building behind me is known as West Virginia Independence Hall. This is the building where many meetings were held to discuss the idea of West Virginia becoming its own state. Also known as the Old Custom House, this building is often mistaken as our state's first capital building. That's right, the first capital of West Virginia was Wheeling. It's only fitting, we were the birthplace of the state. The first state capital building was actually this building here. This building served as our state capital for a total of seven years, from 1863 to 1870. But in 1869, the state legislature decided that the state capital should be more centrally located. Obviously, Wheeling is not near the middle of the state. So in 1870, the state capital was moved to Charleston. The state records were moved from this building down to the waterfront. They were loaded on a steamboat named the Mountain Boy and they were floated down the Ohio River and up the Kanawha River to Charleston. Why did they use a boat? Well, because they didn't have state roads back then. The easiest way to get to Charleston from Wheeling was by boat. After just a few years of being in Charleston, the state capital was moved back to Wheeling. In 1875, the legislature decided to move the state capital back to Wheeling. So they again loaded all the state records up on a boat and they floated down the Kanawha River and up the Ohio. The city of Wheeling had agreed to build a new state capitol building. However, that building was not done, so again, just temporarily, this building was again used as the state capitol until the new building was built. That new building was just a couple blocks away from here. The state capitol of West Virginia is Charleston. But did you know that the people actually voted on Charleston? In 1877, the state government held an election to decide where the state capital should be permanently. The people had three choices, Charleston, Clarksburg, and Martinsburg. And guess who won? Martinsburg, just kidding. Charleston was the winner. With over 41,000 votes, the city of Charleston was permanently elected our state capital. Hello everyone, I am Sheldon Owen, Extension Wildlife Specialist with West Virginia University Extension. And today we're celebrating the state of West Virginia. Did you know that West Virginia has a state animal? Do you know what that state animal is? Well, if you guessed the black bear, you are correct. The state animal for West Virginia is the black bear. Luckily today, we have a good friend of mine, Colin Carpenter, who is with the West Virginia Division of Natural Resources and who is the bear program coordinator, going to tell us a little bit more about the black bear found here in West Virginia. So luckily today, we're getting to, to work with some very small versions of our West Virginia black bear. How big are our average size of a West Virginia black bear? So our, our males are larger than, than the females. They always, they are all, they're, they're always that way. Um, we have males that can go four to five hundred pounds if they have, you know, if, they're, if they have a really good food source. Typically, an adult male is anywhere from three hundred to four hundred pounds. A female, um, a lot of our females in the southern part of the state might, might only be one hundred and fifty pounds um, at adulthood. But we have females, especially in the fall of the year when they've been eating well, they can go over two hundred pounds. And these that you have here, these two are about how old? Probably about two months. Okay. So, and, and these small, this I've got a smaller one, and the smaller one that Sheldon is wearing is a fanny pack. Uh, how old are they? So those are those are probably uh, a month and a half uh, old. Okay. So our, our median birth date for cubs is January fifteenth. So 
Cubs can be born anytime between January and early February. Um, these ones were obviously born a little bit later. They're from two different litters. So, um, but yeah, they, they grow incredibly quickly. So, you know, they're, they're 10 to 16 ounces when they're born. And by the time they're leaving the den with mom in mid-April to early May, they're seven to eight pounds. So they grow incredibly quickly. They'll stay with their mom how long they'll after They'll stay, stay with her for 18 months. So okay. um, we will see them again the following winter. When we come back to check on her den again, she'll have last year's cubs with, with her. Typically the males at that time will be 50 pounds roughly. And the females are typically 40, 40 to 45 pounds at that time. So, so how long do our black bears live, or what is their lifespan? They're, they're very long lived. So the females live longer than the males, um, but we have females that routinely live into their mid to late 20s. Wow. So, you know, we've, we've got a couple here. Can you give us an estimate, a uh, scientific estimate of the number of bears that we have across the state? Sure, sure. We, we have 12 to 15,000 black bears in West Virginia. Um, we came from a, a low in the 1970s, late 60s, early 70s, an estimate of about 500 animals to almost 15,000 today. So we've come a long way. So bears are pretty much statewide across the state. And you know, when we're going out hiking or, or, or playing in the woods and we encourage you to do that, that's something we want to do, we need to be bear aware. We know that they're out there. So what are some of the steps we can take to be safe out in the woods? The best thing to do is let that bear know you're there. A lot of times, you know, a bear is going about his day foraging. That's what they spend the bulk of their time doing. They're looking for food. So if you, you know, you come upon one another, you need to let that bear know you that you're there. Make a loud noise, let, you know, hey bear, I'm here, you know, type of thing. In, in most cases, that bear is going to be, it's going to be going away so fast you won't even be able to, to, to get a picture of it. We're lucky in the fact that bears are, black bears are, are, are docile animals, okay? Typically, they're a curious animal, but they're not typically aggressive. So um, if you see a bear in the woods, I mean, you know, the best thing to do is, you know, observe it, obviously, enjoy it, um, you know, take your pictures. Don't try to approach too closely. Let the animal know you're there. Most of the time, if they catch your scent, they're going to run. Um, you know, what we try to avoid, we don't want people getting too close. Um, we don't want people associate or bears associating people with food. So obviously we don't want, you know, food being left un unattended at campsites and, your, and, you know, things like that. Thank you, Colin. Now those were some cute and cuddly bear cubs. When they grow up, they're a little less cute and cuddly, but still an amazing animal out across the landscape here in West Virginia. I encourage you to get out and explore and enjoy the wild, wonderful West Virginia. All right, Jim, you pulled this one out of a locked box, so it makes me think this is a venomous snake. So exactly. Yeah. What, what do we you have? can see this, right, the long hook. I, I didn't grab him. This is uh, our timber rattlesnake. This is probably the most venomous snake in West Virginia. It's interesting because there's over 20 different kinds of rattlesnakes in North America, and we only have one, and that's the timber rattlesnake. He has a rattle on the end of his tail, and he'll rattle sometimes. I'm, I'm trying to get him to rattle. When he rattles, he shakes his tail about 50 times every second, which is unbelievably fast. And we have no idea how an animal can control his muscles like that. But all rattlesnakes, the last couple inches of their tail will be black. That's why they're also called velvet tails. And some rattlesnakes are almost completely black. Some are almost completely yellow but they'll have this characteristic markings up and down their whole body. Now him, you can kind of see he does have more of a skinnier neck, more of a triangular shaped head, but still you kind of have to be careful. You, you, you don't just want to look at the shape of his head. All rattlesnakes, even babies that are born, will have one little button, one little rattle on the end of its, its tail. And as they grow, they shed. And every time they shed, their tail will grow one more segment. So if you count those, it's not how old the snake is, it's just how many times he shed his skin. It's interesting too, because rattlesnakes can't hear their rattle. They don't hear like we do. They don't have those external uh, ear openings like we do. They don't have eardrums. They kind of feel through their belly and through their jaw so they can feel the vibrations. He, he's, he's pretty easy going like any rattlesnakes. They're not going to bother you unless you bother them. So, so again, just being snake aware while we're outdoors and we're, we're seeing these snakes, 
uh, you know, pay attention to where we where we are, where we're stepping, where exactly. we're sitting, exactly. what type of vegetation we're walking through. Another idea would be wear good closed-toed shoes closed -toed or, or long shoes pants or and boots. Any kind of boots, because mm -hmm. if, if you know where there are going to be rattlesnakes, and these guys are usually found higher up in the mountains, lots of rocks, kind of a scattered sunlight on the forest floor. If you think there might be rattlesnakes there, be extra careful. You can get snake leggings, you can get snake chaps, you can get snake boots, or just wear some good leather shoes and the snake fangs won't be able to go through that you know, leather. And most of the times when people are bit, they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. They're stepping on the snake, they see it there, they're trying to kill it, they try to pin down the snake's head to try to grab it behind its head. Uh, so if, if you do hear one, be extra careful, just walk around it and you'll be fine. Did you know that West Virginia has a state insect? And that insect is the honeybee. Most people know of honeybees and they think of a food that they produce for us. You know what that is? Honey. But they're also really important for other food crops. They, honeybees are responsible for pollinating a lot of food that we like to eat. A couple of examples, apples, watermelon, a really fun pollination piece is almonds. Any of you like to eat almonds? California produces between 75 and 80 percent of the almonds produced worldwide on an annual basis. And all of those flowers and almonds have to be pollinated. So it takes around 2 million or a little under 2 million hives of honeybees every year in California during the month of February to pollinate all of the almond trees. In the United States, there's about 2.7 million hives of honeybees, so that's almost two-thirds of the bees across the country that are trucked into California on every year for that pollination process, including bees from West Virginia are trucked clear out for the almond pollination. In a hive of bees, you will actually find three different classes of honeybees. One is the queen. Everybody's heard of the queen bee? That queen bee is really important for the hive. Her primary job that everybody recognizes is laying eggs. And she can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. And she is actually that mother of all of the bees in the hive. So if you look at these hives here, you can see lots of bees flying in and out. That one queen bee that's in this hive is gonna be the mother to all of those bees. The second class of bees in the hive is the worker bees. The worker bees are the bees that do all of the work. So right now you can see a bunch of worker bees that are flying in and out of the hive. They're going out and doing that pollination, visiting flowers, gathering pollen and nectar to bring back to the hive. And they also do all the work in the hive, caring for all of those eggs that are laid up through until they become adult bees and feeding the queen and taking care of her. The third class of bees is the drones. They're the male bees. They spend a lot of time just hanging out in the hive and their primary job is to mate with the queen. Now, one of the other neat things with a hive is in here, this hive, this is a smaller hive that was just started this year. It probably has somewhere around 15 to 20,000 bees in it. A full hive can get up to 50,000 bees in one hive. And did you know that West Virginia actually has a state butterfly? Do you know which butterfly is our state butterfly? You guessed it correctly, it is the monarch butterfly. I'm standing here in one of our research plots, WVU Jackson's Mill, where we're actually growing uh, some common milkweed, which is a very important plant for our monarch butterflies. So the monarch butterfly is our only migratory butterfly here in North America. It arrives here in West Virginia late summer, July, August into September. They'll lay eggs, those eggs will hatch, the larva will feed on our milkweed species, much like uh, the, the, the species that you see in front of us. Feed on those, they'll grow, then they'll go into a chrysalis and metamorphose into that adult butterfly phase and then that generation that's here in West Virginia will actually fly back down to Mexico and spend the winter. So they're migrating 
down to Mexico, and then the ones that arrive here next fall or next year are the great, great grandchildren of those that migrate this year. So it's an amazing, phenomenal migration pattern from our, our monarch butterflies. They are this iconic, you know, orange and black coloration. We learn about their biology. We learn about these migration patterns in our schools. And it's a great species. It's a great butterfly to have as our state butterfly here in West Virginia. But one thing that's very important is having their habitat, having vegetation for them so they can actually have something to feed on. Now the larva will feed on these milkweed species. We have about nine different milkweed species here in West Virginia. This is probably the most common and it is called common milkweed. So they're feeding on that. They have to have this to survive. Now adults will feed on a variety of flowers. So any flowering plant that's out there, any, any nectar that's being produced, you know, they can feed on and get fu uh, fuel from. Uh, but they have to have our milkweeds for the larva to feed on and to survive. So this is a very important plant to have on the landscapes of West Virginia. If we don't have it, we'll lose our monarch butterfly. And if you look at the populations of monarchs over time, for the past two decades, we've seen a significant decrease in our monarch populations. They're now being considered uh, to be listed as an endangered species. So it's very important that we conserve their habitats we conserve milkweeds so we can conserve this species and have this species on the landscape for years to come. All right, we encourage you to get outside and explore, look for common milkweed, look for our monarch butterflies. Just get outside and enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy the wild, wonderful West Virginia. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I've got something special for you a little bit later in the episode, but it's not quite ready. Um, come back to me in a little bit. In the meantime, Check this out. Today's read aloud is Wimberly Worried by Kevin Hanks. Wimberly Worried about everything. Big things. I wanted to make sure you were still here. Little things and things in between. Mama, what if I shrink? Wimberly worried in the morning. She worried at night. And she worried throughout the day. You worry too much, said her mother. When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said her grandmother. Too much worry. Grandma's sweatshirt says, go with the flow. At home, Wimberly worried about the tree in the front yard. What if it falls on our house? And the crack in the living room wall. What if it gets bigger and something comes out of it? And the noise the radiators made. What if there's a snake inside? Playground, Wimberly worried about the chains on the swings and the bolts on the slide and the bars on the jungle gym. Too rusty, too loose, too high. And always she worried about her doll, Pedal. Shouldn't Pedal have a car seat too? Pedal's lost forever. I found her, sweetie. I'll wait for you, Pedal. Don't worry, said her mother. Don't worry said her father, but Wimberly worried. She worried and worried and worried. When Wimberly was especially worried, she rubbed Petal's ears. Wimberly worried that if she didn't stop worrying, Petal would have no ears left at all. On her birthday, Wimberly worried that no one would come to her party. See, said her mother, there was nothing to worry about. This is the best present ever. I wish I had my birthday today. But then Wimberly worried that there wouldn't be enough cake. On Halloween, Wimberly worried that there would be too many butterflies in the neighborhood parade. See, said her father, there was nothing to worry about. But then Wimberly worried because she was the only one. You worry too much, said her mother. 
When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said her grandmother. Too much worry. Soon, Wimberly had a new worry, school. Wimberly worried about the start of school more than anything she had ever worried about before. I loved school. By the time the first day arrived, Wimberly had a long list of worries. What if no one else has spots? What if no one else wears stripes? What if no one else brings a doll? What if the teacher is mean? What if the room smells bad? What if they make fun of my name? What if I can't find the bathroom? What if I hate the snack? What if I have to cry? Don't worry, said her mother. Don't worry, said her father. But Wimberly worried. She worried and worried and worried. She worried all the way there. While Wimberly's parents talked to the teacher, Mrs. Peacham, Wimberly looked around the room. Then Mrs. Peacham said, Wimberly, there is someone I think you should meet. Her name was Jewel. She was standing by herself. She was wearing stripes. She was holding a doll. At first, Wimberly and Jewel just peeked at each other. This is Petal, said Wimberly. This is Niblet, said Jewel. Petal waved. Niblet waved back. Hi, said Petal. Hi, said Niblet. I rub her ears, said Wimberly. I rub her nose, said Jewel. Throughout the morning, Wimberly and Jewel sat side by side and played together whenever they could. Petal and Niblet sat side by side too. Wimberly worried, but no more than usual, and sometimes even less. Before Wimberly knew it, it was time to go home. Come back tomorrow, called Mrs. Peacham as the students walked out the door. Wimberly turned and smiled and waved. I will, she said. Don't worry. The end. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Energy Express as we've celebrated West Virginia's birthday. And what's a birthday party without a little singing? <laughs> No, I, I think I know a better song, Hold on, but I'll need a different instrument. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, we'll put the words at the bottom of the screen so you can sing along. Let's go. me a 
of my home far away And driving down the road I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday Yesterday Country roads Take me home To the place I belong West Virginia Mountain mama Take me home Country roads Take me home Country roads. We'll see you back here tomorrow.